Well, that brings us to the old main event. About half the show here is uh, for the WWF Championship. We got a 60-minute Iron Man match. The champion, Bret Hart, defending against Shawn Michaels. Man, so, I mean, my, my first thought. I mean, did you catch the Revolution Iron Man match between MJF and Brian uh, Danielson? So, unfortunately, I did not. And that's actually haunting me right now because I want to watch that match because I heard it's such time. good things. It's such good things about it. And I've always actually been a fan of Iron Man matches because you have to be creative in them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, for, it's, it's worth your time for sure. And it's interesting to kind of go back and see because, I mean, this is the first time they did it, at least in WWF. I don't know if they did it in, like, yeah. Japan or some shit. But, um, well, I mean, 60-minute 60 uh, 60 minute matches were not uncommon ever, but it's, like, in a televised setting. Right. That it's just so different. It's so different. This is the first, what, televised Iron Man no match. WrestleMania, and it's like, it's going to go 60 minutes, which I remember at the time, I remember my dad and I pulling up some popcorn and stuff, and it's like, we knew we had some time. And it's mm -hmm. like, that was a weird feeling at the time to know that like, oh, like, you you know this match is going to go on 60 minutes, like, so we, we got we got to sit here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's crazy, because I mean, we're coming out of an era where the main events of these type of shows were, it was always like Hogan versus some giant. It was Yokozuna in the main event. It was some yeah. shit like that. Like, you know, LT versus Bam Bam. Like it was the pop and circumstance right. of it all. Now we just have like the most raw wrestling that wrestling can get. It's literally just 60 minutes. No, no stip stipulation or other than Iron Man, but no like other outside entities in play here. We just got two guys wrestling for an hour. So it's a testament to, how the uh, how the industry is changing, I guess, at this point. But um, I, was, I was watching this. I completely forgot about the zipline entrance. So, really? <laughs> and Jose Lothario, the Shawn Michaels trainer, I guess, comes out. They play Shawn's music. And it's just Jose coming out. I'm like, where the hell is Shawn? And then I'm like, oh, duh. It's the, uh, the old zipline from the top. Oh, look at that ride. Ah. Oh! Which is uh, which is an like, iconic shot for us. So like I've seen it in highlight clips and stuff like that, but watching it like I'm sitting down, I'm watching the show, and I see this happen. It's like man, this is, that was fucking cool. That was, that was a cool moment. Yeah, especially it's like '96. You got to remember, it's like it's not like the yeah. extravagant WrestleMania that we get today. So it's just like this guy zip lining from the top of the freaking arena down yeah. into the crowd into his click, as he cleverly yeah. called them. You know, he called his fans the click. All right. Um, but I, th I think <laughs> it's funny. We used to, I had a friend that used to do, we used to do like fake commentary and I used to play like a Bobby Heenan type character, right? So I can't watch the Jose Lothario entrance without almost like popping for myself, which is egotistical. Mm -hmm. But like, I remember we were doing, re this is recorded somewhere, but Jose Lothario comes out and I'm like, look, look at this. If, if this is a shape that Shawn Michaels is showing up in, he has no chance against Bret Hart. And like my friend's like muting his mic because he's laughing so hard. Like I definitely Bobby Heenan did like, <laughs> you know, just act stupid. But yeah, that's, that's the real ultimate warrior. He's not the one that was out of shape and balding. It was Shawn right. Michaels. Was that the old, the real ultimate warrior? Is Jose Lothario Jim <laughs> Helwig? That's, that's the question right. we all are by, looking by for. By the way, Sidebar yeah. I, that I never thought about until years later. He had to play like a Latin lover type character, right? Because Lothario means what? Like that Latin lover kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, Los right? Lotharios, so right? That's a... I thought, right, exactly. That was what made me think of it. And I went, oh my God, is that why Shawn Michaels played like the sexy boy type character? Like I thought okay. about like all of this years later because I was like, was it kind of like akin to his trainer playing like a, like a ladies man type type gimmick because i'm like there's no way jose lothario would be named that if not for right. having a similar type gimmick well first of and all and was jose lothario the latin lover in the 97 rumble possibly possibly <laughs> i mean i have his wiki up it doesn't, doesn't right. say that although his real name is <laughs> guadalupe which is fucking badass i love it uh it's uh yeah it doesn't really see yeah, the the great lothario el gran lothario super sock Whatever that means. Uh, I got a super, super sock, sock in my uh, hamper right now. But 
Uh, but yeah, so Lothario's out there. Sean's out there. Brett's out there. Match gets underway. And uh, man, it is a 10 minute headlock <laughs> to open up this match, which is yeah. something that because, you know, we're, fre- I, we're I'm fresh off of seeing that that uh, MJF Brian Danielson Iron Man match. And the thing that struck me about that match is that like it didn't feel like it dragged. Like it felt like there was always there was like a story being told throughout the thing. Like there were like that match was like a story with a bunch of chapters. This felt like one long chapter almost in a way, which they're different. And granted, this is the first time they're doing it, so it's not necessarily apples yeah. and apples. But it was just striking how much that this match type has changed over time. But um but yeah, really slow pace in the beginning. I mean, it's literally like Brett has Sean in a headlock for 10 minutes. And then Sean, he starts to kind of fire up a little bit. He does like his like a head scissors. He knocks Brett to the outside. At one point, Sean, he like gets thrown over the top rope, but he skins the cat. But then he just rushes right back into an arm bar. But I think the slow pace, though, in the beginning... I think it made like every like big move. I think it like amplified everything. So I think there was like value to that in the beginning, especially in '96. I mean, I think I think they did a good job because if I had to give like a you know um, not a criticism to today's Iron Man match, but today today's Iron Man match is catered to today's crowd, whereas mm-hmm. like they approached it in like a like okay, if this were a real thing, how would we do it? And it was like. And, and the commentary emphasized it too, mm-hmm. which was like, "Hey, that first, you know, that first pinfall is going to mean something." So they were almost approaching it like, "We know we got it." Like talking about Brett and Sean, we know we got an hour to go. We're not doing yeah. our high flying. We're not doing our 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 other stuff. We're just kind of taking it easy, feeling each other out because we know, you know, we got another fifty minutes to go after these headlocks. You mm-hmm. know, so I really like that they approached it from a real aspect. And to me, it actually, like you said, it makes the big moves seem better because they're going so slow that it's like when it's like, bam, they hit something. You're like, holy crap, where'd that come from? Right. Um, so I have a, like a soft spot for this Iron Man match. But at the same time, yeah, you know, viewing it with today's eyes, I'm like, wow, this is a very slow paced match. Very yeah. slow paced. But yeah, to your point, in kayfabe, it makes sense because and like in the build up to this, they were doing all like the goofy like montage videos of them training, like very Rocky-esque. Were and Brett's like, yeah, I gotta prepare for Sean. He's like a Mexican jumping bean in there. He's doing all his flashy moves and whatnots. And then Sean comes out here doing the opposite of that. So in kayfabe, it's like, oh, he's kind of throwing Brett off because this isn't what he expected. And Sean, right? You know, you you can't really beat Brett at that game. So that's why it's kind of a stalemate for the first like half of this match, at least. So. Story makes sense for sure, but yeah. it was very. And I like that, game. like, I like that, like, you know, at the time, especially too. It's like we thought this was going to be like five falls versus five falls, and right. like, I think everybody was expecting that, and that is not what we got at all. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the yeah, it's the novelty of it. You like, you don't know what to expect. Is it going to be a ten ten match or is it going to be zero zero? And like, fifty minutes left, forty minutes left, nothing. 30 minutes left, nothing. And then, like, once, like, 30 minutes hits, the bigger moves start to be more frequent. Like, Brett hits a big pile driver at some point. Sean goes for the sweet chin music, but Brett he escapes the ring. He, like, runs away from him. And they're, they're kind of, like, do it a few times where Brett, like, yeah. slides out of the ring. And Sean's, like, about to jump on him. But Brett gets out of the way. And they it's, like, keeps trying and trying. And eventually, Sean's able to hit that. From the top to the outside onto Brett. Throws Brett in the ring. It's a cross body off the top. So now he's like busting out all this high flying stuff. Um, but with that spot, he, Sean comes off with the cross body. But then Brett rolls through and it's a two counts. It's like, wait, and the crowd was with it. I mean, that was like a really dramatic spot there. That was like really yeah. close two count. So at this point, we were kind of cooking a little bit. And then 20 minutes left. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. And it's like, man, is anybody gonna yeah. get a fall here it's at this point it's like man it's it's not gonna be a high scoring game probably shout um, out to the t- tony chimble spot that happens earlier on because i just it's just my favorite spot when like brett's laid up against tony chimble the ring announcer and then sean comes in with the sweet chin music brett moves and just clocks tony i was and wondering then they if have that was to, tony chimble i wasn't sure it was yeah, yeah uh and then they cart him out but they do it again kayfabe is so real at the time they wheel him out and they're trying to do it like low so they're hiding underneath the ring apron and they're right. putting them out but it, 
again, it was just like they did some cool stuff in this, but it went slow. But I think if you if you know that like if you just go into it with like, hey, it's not going to be as fast as a normal match, like you appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first, like, 40 minutes of the match, I think Brett tries the sharpshooter once, and Sean tries the sweet chin music, like, twice. So it's like, those big moves are mattering, especially when it, like, gets to the end of right. this match. Exactly. Um, they're not, like, spamming their finishers, like, yeah. you know, it's like they're they're waiting to build up to, like, that. And they're almost, like, testing each other to see, like, if they can get, they can catch them off guard and, like, mm -hmm. it's good stuff, man. I mean, I think the last, like, 10 or so minutes of this match are great. Um, yeah. Brett busts out a superplex from the top, goes in to uh, lock in the sharpshooter, but it gets blocked. So Brett has to transition into a single leg crab, but Sean gets to the ropes. Uh, Sean's able to hit his elbow drop for a two count. Then Sean goes for a missile drop kick, but Brett catches him out of midair and then locks in the sharpshooter with 40 seconds left. And he holds him in there. Sean doesn't tap. And then the time hits zero. Bell rings. It's a and draw. The crowd everybody. was with it. The crowd yes. was so with it in the last 40 seconds. Like Whew. Brett locks in that that sharpshooter. Now you gotta remember, um, again, for today's fans, I guess it's probably the feel of like a very similar feel to like, oh, can Cody win his first WWE championship? You know, mm -hmm. it was like Sean was the guy, and it was very obvious, right? Um, but it would almost be like, you know, another guy that we liked, let's say Sami Zayn having the title, right? So it's like, it would be like Sami and Cody facing. Right. That was the feel of this, where it was just like, okay, come on, Sean's got to have the title. It was, you know, to the point, just to give you, a, to tell you how popular Sean was, uh, my friend is a lifelong Bret Hart fan. And he, he told me, he's like, you're jumping on that podcast, WrestleMania 12, mention this. He's, he was a lifelong Bret Hart fan, and he was rooting for Shawn Michaels to win. Because that people wanted Shawn Michaels to win that title that much. Really? So again, now imagine the last 40 seconds, right? So Shawn's our guy. Shawn's the next incumbent. We know it. We feel it. Brett catches him in the sharpshooter, which nobody gets out of the sharpshooter. Right. And there's 40 seconds left. That crowd comes unglued because they're like, do not tap, Shawn. Do not tap. Do not tap. And we're all going crazy at home. I was remember jumping out of my seat going like, no, no, no. And then sure enough, the bell rings. But the problem with that is Sean's still lost. You're like, right. oh no, wait, the time's done. So Sean, so, 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 Brett, Brett so Brett keeps the title. Yeah. Yep. So it was yeah. very disappointing in that couple of minutes there. Yeah. No, I mean, it was great drama to your point. But yeah, ultimately yeah. it's a draw. But old boy Gorilla Monsoon, who was just reinstated as uh, the president, of the WWF. He gets in there. He's like, hey, sudden death, boys. So the they restart the match. Brett's none too pleased with this. He uh, gets back in the ring. I guess, we're, I guess we're wrestling some more. And uh, I don't know how long it lasts. But it's not too much longer. Uh, Sean gets flipped into the corner. Leaps over Brett. Hits Brett with a sweet chin music. But he can't capitalize. He's so beat up. He just got out of that sharpshooter. They both get up kind of at the same time, and then Sean hits him with a second sweet chin music and gets the win. I, I didn't know that was like the sequence that ended this. I knew it was a sweet chin music, yeah. but I didn't know the whole thing where like he hits one, they couldn't get up, and then he gets back up and hits him with a second one. I thought that was a really cool finish. And uh He's collapsed in, into it too. It's like yeah. it's such a good I don't know, it's like one of my favorite cells of the of the sweet chin music by Brett, and then also one of the best cells by Sean. Because mm -hmm. they both just go down like two battered athletes. It's kind of like, you know, the the cliche in boxing, the like the double knockout and the like getting like, you know, them both going down in Rocky. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's pretty much what happened here. Sean pretty much just collapses onto Brett. Ah, it's, it's good stuff, man. It's like Brett had zero HP and Sean had one HP. Like it was just the right. slimmest of margins. Yeah. Uh, but that's all it takes. The final score is one to zero, and uh, by God, Kenneth, it's a boyhood dream. It's uh, it's not false, that's for sure. So it's come true. It's come, it has true. come true. That's what they say. That's what they say. And then Sean celebrates. And uh, I have a question: Did Sean? Is it? 
I don't feel like I like Sean here. I feel like he's he's comes off like a dick because he like shoves okay. Earl Hebner I, out of the I ring. I was gonna I was gonna <laughs> mention it, which is funny because it's like you know as a kid, um, you watch it and you're like, man, Sean's whatever. This is great, you know, and and the boyhood dream has come true, and like you want to get that picture. In reality, this is 1996 Shawn Michaels, and he's he's a dick. Mm. And basically, he's shoving Earl Hebner, and he's basically telling he's telling tell Brett to get the fuck out of the ring. As in, mm -hmm. like, give me the final shot, the shot of me with this. And it's just like, my dude, like, think about it like this. You've had an hour match, an hour five at this point, I guess. You you won the world title off a guy that you've you've idolized, you've wanted to be. And you're telling him to get the fuck out of the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it could have been yeah. at least a little bit better than that of like, hey, hey, tell Brett, ask Brett if he's all right. Like, to let me, let me get the final shot. You mm -hmm. know, but he tells Earl, you know... Tell Brett to get the fuck out of the ring. And you can see, like, if you watch the footage, you can see, like, yeah. he's mounted. Yeah. And that's, like you said, he comes across like a dick. You can see that he's not saying anything nice um, and telling Earl to relay it to Brett. And it, it ruins it for me as an adult because I'm like, come on, dude. Like, this is right. your crowning achievement, man. And, like, you have to be a, a dick in that moment. That's my yeah. favorite wrestler, just FYI. Like it's my favorite wrestler. So if I'm a, I can say it, trust me, I get I get people shitting on him for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And but I guess it uh sparked one of the best rivalries of all time with this match, which I believe this is the first time they've had a match, or at least like on this stage, I guess. They might have had like very they've had, early they've had matches. They've had matches, but it, this is probably the best way to say it is like, you know, you watch a Triple H versus The Rock for the IC title. And mm -hmm. then when you finally see the game versus The Rock as for the WWF championship, and then funny enough, they had an Iron Man match and stuff like that. It's like right. a different caliber. It's like different caliber athletes. That's what we were seeing here, which is like them in the main event facing for the first time as, as like those top guys. Um, so completely different feel. Um, and I think they delivered, man. I thought, um, still maybe my favorite Iron Man match, but besides really? maybe, believe it or not, Bailey and Sasha. I think Bailey and Sasha might be my favorite. Yeah. Brock and Kurt. Um, I like, you know, it's funny. I like Brock and Kurt, but I think, I don't know. I, it's one of those things where it's like, I expected that to be good. I think they've had. Brock and Kurt are just so good together that it's like it's hard for me to just look at that match. I look they at the face few. each other so much, like in that time span too. It's hard to right. like, segment right. that match. Right. That that's what it is. Yeah, I haven't seen that match in a while, so I don't know if that like I, how that lives up to it. But I kind of want to watch it now that you've mentioned it because obviously when does that it's been enough time. It was sometime in 03. I want to say it, what was it. Was it a SmackDown? I want to say it was just I like a random was, episode yeah. of SmackDown. Yeah. It's probably like in the summer at some time, which I'm almost there in my timeline. So um, we shall see. We shall see. But yeah, give that Revolution match a watch too. It was a very. Yeah, um, I got it. I'm mad that I didn't have a chance. To, uh, I had a friend going through some stuff. So we had to talk. So I, I didn't get to watch that whole no pay per view. Excuse. Yeah. Because you, I don't you got really need to do. friends. <laughs> I don't need a friend. I don't. I, I don't need a, a tag team partner. I just mm. need to watch AEW Revolution. You do. You do. But, you know, I could have bootlegged it like Cody Rhodes. I don't know why the hell I didn't. <laughs> could have lime wired that bad boy and uh, right, given it right. a gander. We still can watch Ricky Starks. He's not blonde though, but uh, he is sexy though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Y y y Sonata is all I see. 